Hi, welcome to another video from Team Supreme Gamers. It's been over a year since my last performance guide video, and it's one of the most watched videos on our channel. I've tried to explain most of the important points in that video. Still, people keep asking us about what the best kernel for their CPU, or what is the best Mesa for PUBG Mobile. So in this video, I'll be mainly focusing on some of the Android x86 system components like kernels, Mesa, and ARM native bridge, and how they impact your system performance, and I'll also bust some myths among people related to increasing performance on Phoenix OS or any Android x86 OS. First of all, if you want to upgrade your current PC, or are planning to buy a new laptop to play games on Phoenix OS or Android x86, then I have got good news for you. We're going to be making a complete hardware buy guide for Android x86, and it will be available on this channel soon. So make sure to subscribe to the channel. It will encourage us to make more cool videos like this. Now, moving on with the video, and let's see how you can increase your Android x86 boot up time. The boot time is highly dependent on your hard disk speed and partition type. During the initial boot of the Android x86 system, the kernel loads up your system and data partitions in your RAM, and if you are using an SSD with higher frequency RAM, then your boot up time will be much faster compared to a spinning hard drive. Using EXT4 partitions instead of NTFS can give you better read-write speeds, but using NTFS means using image files, and they need to be loaded in the RAM during boot, and they do impact your system boot up time. But after boot, your app launch speeds are good because everything is loaded into the RAM, but disk write speeds will remain slow. So now you know how to increase your OS boot time. Let's move to the next part, that is memory management. When you open an app, the system allocates a small part of the memory to the app, and after that, it gets loaded into the RAM. The app can take more or less amount of memory according to its functions. For example, a 3D game like PUBG Mobile first loads its game engine, and then the game engine loads the graphics according to the app functions since the app is reading the graphics from the hard drive. Its loading time will also depend on your hard drive speeds and partition type. The amount of memory consumed by an Android x86 OS is very low compared to a standard Android mobile OS, and you can easily play PUBG Mobile in 2-3 GB RAM because mobile phones use more background apps and services than any Android x86 OS. That's why using a memory management app to kill background apps and services is useless in Android x86. But nowadays, mobile phones are using faster memory and storage within the SoC chipset, which makes them very powerful and highly efficient compared to typical x86 Intel AMD laptops and desktops. As x86 CPUs nowadays are getting expensive, with a very small performance increase from generation to generation, companies like Apple and Microsoft are starting to build their own ARM SoCs which are very power efficient and delivers desktop class performance in a much smaller form factor. Now let's talk about the application binary interface, also known as Android ABI. Currently, Android supports four different types of ABIs, ARM, ARM64, x86, and x86-64. So an app developer can publish their apps in four different types of ABIs to support different CPU instruction sets. For example, the game Free Fire has three APK variants, ARM, ARM64, and x86, which means it can run on any Android or Android x86 OS without any CPU emulations. Intel and AMD CPUs can run any x86 app but they can't run any ARM or ARM64 apps without the Lib Houdini, which is a closed source ARM emulation project by Intel and Google to run ARM apps on x86 architecture. The Lib Houdini is good at emulating ARM apps, but it can't emulate ARM64 apps properly. And if you are using PC emulators like GameLoop to play PUBG Mobile, then you are using double emulation to play it on top of Windows. 
That's why most of the PC emulators need a very high-end desktop to run games like PUBG Mobile. But even a low-end PC emulator can run Free Fire just fine because it has an x86 APK variant that doesn't need any ARM emulation. Phoenix OS Dark Matter has built-in gaming protocols that contain different versions of Lou Houdini files along with some special tweaks for games. That's why if you are having some app crashing issues in one of them, then you can simply switch to another gaming protocol using Gearlock Recovery. And now let's talk about the kernel. The Linux kernel is the largest collaborative software project ever. The latest kernel 5.11 was supported by 225 companies and around 2,000 developers around the world. While the Linux kernel contains code for all the different chip architectures and hardware drivers it supports, an individual system runs only a fraction of the code base. An average laptop only uses around 2 million lines of code from over 27 million lines of kernel code. The people who contribute to the Linux project are considered as one of the greatest minds on the planet. Around 18% of the core kernel developers are from Facebook, and it is growing as one of the most active kernel developers companies. Second position goes to Intel with around 11% of active contributors. The reason I'm telling you this is because there are some idiots over the internet who claims you can unlock Ultra Max Pro Beast performance on your device just by adding a few system props. So the first thing you need to do is stay away from those scammers. And don't buy anything that has Ultra, Max, Beast, Light, or Universal in their names. Now let's talk about how you can find the best kernel for your device. As I've said in my previous performance guide, first of all, you need to know your hardware, find the model of your CPU, GPU, and Wi-Fi drivers, and then find the year they're manufactured. You can also use some third-party tools like CPU-Z and HWinfo to find information about your hardware. Then you need to find a kernel that has support for it, which is also pretty simple. Just go to the kernel version history wiki page, find out the name of the kernel that is released after your CPU or GPU model release date. It can take developers up to 6 to 12 months to release a stable kernel for a CPU that just launched. Intel devs are pretty good at adding support for their CPUs, so most of the time, your current kernel just works with it. Kernels and drivers are continuously getting patched from various developers around the world, so there are also high possibilities of bugs and errors. That's why sometimes you'll see a performance boost on an older release, but the latest one has some performance drops. And even if you are seeing a drop in your CPU clocks after a kernel update, then it's done to increase the lifespan of your CPU. The main goal of Linux developers is to deliver a stable kernel that can run your device for longer durations without any system crashes or hardware failures. Some people weren't happy about that, so they forked the generic Linux kernel and combined that with some bleeding edge technology. Like the kid who buys every new flashy thing in the market because it has RGB and gamer stickers on it. You can gain a small performance bump from using those kernels, but then your CPU also generates a lot of heat, and without proper cooling, your performance will go down sooner than you'd expect. So if you want to use your CPU and hardware for a longer duration, then don't put your CPU in performance mode. The developers at kernel.org are way smarter than developers of your universal performance tweaker app, and they care about your device, not your money. So I hope now you know what is the best kernel for your device, and if you still have any doubts, then go to our wiki pages or open the Novice Help app in Dark Matter 4.7 builds. Moving on to the Mesa 3D and how you can find the best Mesa version for your device. Unlike kernel finding, the best Mesa is a bit tricky and mostly the latest Mesa version will give you better graphics quality, but will also put more load on your GPU, especially integrated GPUs. Currently, there is no way to optimize Mesa in Android x86. You just have to rely on Mesa and Android x86 developers to provide a stable release that has fewer bugs. Performance on Mesa may vary from game to game since all the games use different kinds of game engines to render the graphics. Some have better optimization for Mesa, others might not even work. 
And if you have an NVIDIA GPU, then it might not even work with your Mesa version because NVIDIA drivers for Linux are not open source. A general rule to find the best Mesa version for your device is to find a 6 to 12 month later release of Mesa from your CPU or GPU release date. Test that with your game engine. If it works perfectly, then stick to it. Don't upgrade. If it doesn't, then try the latest and greatest, and then keep testing older versions of Mesa on your game until you find the one that has both performance and stability. And again, if you need more specific details, go to our wiki page or check the Novice Help app on Dark Matter 4.7 builds. Last of all, there are some third-party apps that claim to boost your device performance by adding some system props. Some of these are free, some of these are paid, some of them are open source, and some of them are on GitHub but as useless encrypted binaries. So, should you use them? Well, yes, because if you die in the game because your PC sucks and your internet is poor, but you claim to have god level aim that can kill the enemy even before they shoot you, then you can only blame your third party app, because you've paid for it. Even if you don't see any performance difference after installing it, and your system got pretty unstable after using it, but your mind will tell you it's worth it. I hope you've learned something new today and fully understand that there's no universal tool that can give beast mode just by changing a few system props. Every hardware is different and everyone's priorities are different. That's why we have so many kernel versions and forks like Xanmon kernel which uses some of the bleeding edge technology to boost your device performance. So stay away from scammers, don't pay for anything that's already open source and freely available on the internet. Support the real developers that are working to fix your problems. Everyone has their pluses and minuses. We're also trying to add support for your device, but if we can't, then it's due to our lack of knowledge. But we all enjoy the learning part of the project. This is what brings us together as a community, where we all can learn and grow together. That's all for the Ultimate Popcorn Performance Guide today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ghostface, and I'll see you in the next one.